On this edition of Kingston Live, we talk to Kiss the Fish about their evolution from Queen's Band to Kingston Band, and Bedouin Sound Clash returns home to perform at the Kingston Canadian Film Festival. Hello, I'm Johnny San. I'm Riley Jamore. I didn't want to step on your toes. I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm I don't Pete. know what order we were going in. <laughs> I, I think that was the order we had last time. I don't know. Yeah. So that's fine. This is the Kingston Live podcast where we discuss all things happening in the first capital of Canadian music. And we have a lot to talk about because a lot has happened since our last podcast. Uh, first of all, just some simple things to start off. Um, if you are on a platform that uh, allows you to subscribe, please do so, so you know when we have new podcasts and new things to tell you. Uh, our playlist, I'd like to remind everyone of our Kingston Live playlist. It's on Spotify. Lots and lots of Kingston music. Please check it out. And if you are an artist, band, musician, and you are not on the playlist, please give us a shout, podcast at kingstonlive.ca. We have some tickets to give away for a performance at the Grand Theater. Yeah, coming up on uh, Mor- M- March, March 14th, lousy March weather. March 14th, <laughs> three-time Juno nominee Sarah Sleen will share the stage with Canadian indie staple Hoxley Workman, who's also one of the nicest dudes on the planet. Seems uh, like a nice dude. He is. Uh, Sleen's combination of classical and pop will be joined by Workman's mix of electropop, glam, and cabaret. It's one of those rare opportunities where you can see two artists with their own unique voices performing their songs together and in one of the best sounding venues in the city. We have tickets to that show, so if you would like tickets, follow us on Instagram. Uh, it's not up right now as of the recording of this podcast, and if it's not at the time of the release of this podcast, it will be very soon. So please watch for that. And of course, if you want to get the most out of the Grand Theatre experience, go to kingstongrand.ca to subscribe to Grand On Stage. Uh, another thing, uh, the new new De Trois album was released just recently. Yeah. Yep. Uh, did Pete, did you get a chance to listen to it? Uh, not yet. Uh, I've been loving those singles they've been releasing, but I haven't gotten to the album yet. Yes, I, I've had only a cursory listen of the album, but uh, I've liked what I've heard so far. And yeah, that is out now on Spotify. No word on whether or not there will be physical releases, because I know we liked the vinyl of the previous album. Yeah, yeah, if they got them, uh, I, I would like one. I think I <laughs> can speak for both of us when I say that we want those vinyl. Yes. And Miss Emily is kicking some serious ass. She was nominated for three Maple Blues Awards. She won for Female Vocalist of the Year and New Artist, which is kind of funny because she's not a new artist to <laughs> us. But obviously, she is to some other folks. New, new artist always strikes me as a really funny category. It's like you can just kind of, it's like, oh, you're new to me. All right. Good enough. <laughs> Arcade like Fire, new, newest artist. It's like when you get a new used car. And I just realized how offensive that sounds to musicians comparing them to like a used car. <laughs> but it's also like, it's to I the judges. I think some of them feel like used cars sometimes. <laughs> to the people who are just like defining new, it's like, eh, it is. It's new to me. I have, if I haven't heard it, it's new to me, sort of thing, right? Yeah. So. But she's not new to us. Miss Emily's been at it for a long time. She's worked so hard. So this is well deserved. So, Miss Emily, if you're listening, congratulations. And, of course, uh, the Hold Back the River video won the inaugural Sapphire Video Award, which is pretty awesome. So, once again, good for you, Miss Emily. But also, Jay Middaw, who was our first guest, uh, directed that video. And I don't think Jay's gotten a lot of praise. Miss Emily's gotten a lot of very well-deserved praise for these awards. But, uh, yeah, some let's give Jay some love, too. Good job, Jay. Uh, what else? Shows, lots of shows. Riley Jabor, you got to the Wilderness had their fifth anniversary show. You got to that one, right? Yeah. And first off, why are there not more shows at Blue Martini? That venue rules. Yeah. Like, there's it's, it's such solid. a perfect size and like layout. It's ah, uh, they it need is to do actually, more stuff yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. We both caught Colorado there uh, just a yeah. couple months ago. Yeah. Great venue. Absolutely. Well, and that venue, I mean, it's gone through a few incarnations over the last, you know, many, many years. But yeah, it's always had kind of that setup, uh, which, yeah, is just really conducive to great 
music listening and viewing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it was great seeing uh, them celebrate. It really felt like a celebration more than a concert. Like you got to see them perform, but it's also it's a distinctly Kingston experience when you go in and it's a Kingston band celebrating five years. And I remember like I got in and by the time I got from, you know, that kind of hallway esque area you are where you walk in before you're where the stage is. I had run into 10 people I knew just going to shows and being music fans. Like, it's just, oh, hey, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too, and you, and you. Well, I was just going to say, I love shows like that where it's a successful local band that's up and coming because it becomes such a community event. And yeah, we've all had that experience of walking into those shows and knowing, like, half the people in the room. Yeah. yeah. And they did a, uh, one one really wholesome, like, amazing thing they did was uh, if you, I'm, I'm Really hoping I'm not going to screw up the name. If you've uh, seen their their story about Watermelon Jan, the, the yes, <laughs> the biggest fan that they have, who's from the states, they brought her up for their three cheers for five years uh, celebration at Blue Martini. Her first <laughs> time great. she ever left the United States. That's wow. amazing. Yeah. Very Actually, nice. on that subject, it's funny how much video content there is about the wilderness because there is a new documentary about them. I don't know if you guys have seen this called The Long Run. It was just released a couple of weeks ago. It's by Bobby Shuchuk. And uh, it shot may- roughly about a year ago. And it sort of follows them as they're applying for a factor grant, as they're touring. And there's a lot of really neat stuff. You see them traveling through the winter, you know, in that, that death trap of a van that they have. <laughs> Uh, And it's great. It's kind of like Spinal Tap, except it's real. And when it's funny, we're laughing with them and not at them. But it really does kind of capture that life on the road. Fewer drummers died. (laughs) (laughs) Not a single spontaneous combustion the entire movie. Not one. No, no. Actually, that same night was the fourth. I wasn't at that show because I was at the uh, YGK Music Series show, the fourth one. That was at the mansion, and it was Cave Boy. Have you guys seen or heard Cave Boy? Because I knew very little about the band uh, going in, but I kind of wanted that. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna go. I'm not gonna look anything up. I kind of want to just see what's going on. And uh, they were great. I was very impressed. It was uh, a trio. Guitar, bass, drums, but uh, guitar and bass each sort of supplemented their sound with synthesizers, and uh, it was great. It was just, uh, they're a pop band. Lots of sound for three people, which was really, really cool. Great songs, and I was surprised, I was very impressed with just how tight they were, but at the same time, how sort of loose the performance was. It's very rare you see a band that's that tight and that relaxed at the same time. <laughs> uh, and they were really good. I was very impressed. What else been going on? Last weekend, uh, did you get to, uh, to anything last weekend? Uh, I don't put remember you things. What was last weekend? <laughs> well, last weekend, I don't think any of us saw this, which is kind of funny. But last weekend uh, was... Um, uh, Lost Cousins and Casador were both back in town playing at uh, the Underground. I picked such a bad weekend to not be in Kingston. Well, I missed like three shows. <laughs> well, I was going to say the uh, I did get to the John Bryant show because I know you wanted to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. It, well, I, I did get to that one. Uh, yeah. He was really good. He's kind of like um, he sounds like Dallas Green. Uh, if Dallas Green were like happy on stage. <laughs> Yeah, he's got like a kind of Dallas Green, but slightly more of a hippie vibe, and I really respect that. <laughs> yeah, no, he was he was good. And that same night, I actually finally got to see Info Tourist. They, I kept missing their shows, but they were playing at something else records, um, and Matt had them just set up in the shop, uh, which I was curious to see just how that would work. But it was cool. They kind of were sort of spread out in the center of the the store, and the crowd it wasn't a big crowd. It's not a big store, but they you know they filled that space just in the front where you walk in and it was great yeah it was um really good they were just again really tight band uh jason's so good on the piano uh it was really cool because he had like his own you know electric piano but then he used the piano that matt has in the store (laughs) at the same time that's great yeah Uh, so yeah that was great and their music's really cool because it just kind of takes you on a journey it's not just song 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 there's there's like a there's a there's a story. There's climax. There's lots of neat things happening. What else? Holy cow! So many things. Bedouin Sound Clash is coming to Kingston on March 12th. That's part of the Kingston Canadian Film Festival. And Riley Jabor had an opportunity to catch up with Jay. 
We're going to hear that uh, toward the end of the show. And yeah, Kingston Canadian Film Festival is March 11th to 15th. It will also be the uh, premiere of all of those music videos that the uh, Kingston Film Office has uh, funded for uh, all of those local video producers and uh, bands to get on, like the Meringues we just had on the last episode. I'm yeah. really excited to see what uh, comes out of all this. No, me yeah. too. I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot about that, actually. But uh, yeah, everything we talked about last in the last show, uh, yeah, that's all going to be premiering at the Kingston Canadian Film Festival in March. That's a ridiculous number of really creative people making some very diverse stuff. Like, I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> I like seeing, like, I don't know, I'm the kind of guy that goes, and when there's a movie I'm excited about, I'll watch every trailer and, like, look up all kinds of different stuff about it. So, like, the local equivalent to that is just seeing all the, like, casting calls and, like, people I know who are like, oh, I'm looking for, I don't want to, like, say any of it to give anything away. I'm, like, avoiding spoilers for music videos, but all the the things they've been looking for and the, I know Braden mentioned building sets for their, the video that uh, he's doing with the meringue. So I'm very curious and excited to see the the little things that I've seen little teasers of online. <laughs> well, there was uh, an event to sort of announce all of those uh, pairings of musicians and producers, and Pete and I were there. And uh, actually, I did find out that Braden, the, the money they got when they, they mentioned it was going to be spent on a set, apparently they're recreating some sort of game show. Interesting. I, I'm curious. I, that's that's <laughs> as all I know at the moment. But yeah, the, with those presentations, a lot of the producers got to kind of give us hints of what we would see. And, and there's some really neat stuff that's going to come out of the film festival. Some really yeah. neat and diverse ideas. So very yeah. excited. It's going to be wild. Yeah. I can't wait. When you think of bands that immerse themselves heavily in the blues, you might assume they're middle-aged musicians who grew up listening to the classics, like Muddy Waters, B.B. King, Buddy Guy, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's not every day that you would picture a young band whose influences stem from blues, classic rock, and alt-rock. Since 2018, Kiss the Fish has come a long way from winning their first battle of the bands at Clark Hall Pub. They've not only made a name for themselves in the Queens community, but started to gain recognition in the broader Kingston community after releasing their first two EPs reaching well over 200,000 streams on Spotify and Apple Music, and being added to over 3,000 playlists. Kiss the Fish, welcome. Hey, happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourselves and what you play in the band? Yeah, yeah um, I'm, I'm Corey Schultz, and I play the rhythm guitar. I'm Evan Coder, and uh, I play the lead guitar. I would also like to point out that we have a lot of people in here because most of the band is here. Uh, most of the Kingston Live people are here. Plus, we have uh, Jackson Coulter, who is our intern. Actually, he's technically Rob's intern, and he's going to be helping us, us, us out with some things. He's shooting. The band is shooting. So by the time this is released, there's probably going to be a lot of video content out there. So watch for that. I just realized we have equal number microphones and cameras. That's a first. That has never happened before. <laughs> That's amazing. No. Okay. Good, good problem to have. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot. Of, there are a lot of people and a lot of gear in this little room. Uh, I thought we'd start by talking about Queens because this is kind of an interesting subject for us. Uh, nobody on the Kingston Live team has gone to Queens, but we've all sort of been connected to it, and obviously Queens has such a presence in the Kingston community. Mm -hmm. um, how did you guys? kind of come together well um cory and i lived in the same residence in first year i guess that is the uh the main how, connection yeah the main connection uh, same with sam same as with well. sam who lived on like my and floor he lived just him. down the hall for me for uh, for a year and then i lived with him in a house later on but uh yeah so pretty much we all lived in in res together and uh that was kind of what started our our friendship i guess and yeah. um we played guitar together like all the time when we were in first year and second year and then eventually Corey and I kind of were just like what if we did this uh four people <laughs> pretty much I guess yeah and then we uh we later ran into Mesco who's also a, a queen student so we and met also him on in campus. the room with us yeah, yeah. yeah we actually <laughs> met him met him at a party one night and yeah I like we were like drunkenly talking about music and I was like our band needs a drummer and he was like yeah hey, I am a drummer so <laughs> <laughs> it worked, it worked out serendipitously yeah. but well, that's always cool when bands can come together sort of organically like that, yeah. when it's just a bunch of friends playing music rather than a bunch of strangers trying to, you know, find common musical ground. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of that is kind of how it started. It was like we were kind of just hanging out playing music organic, and then yeah. songs started to develop. So it wasn't even like we yeah. went in with the idea to start a band completely, but we kind of already had some 
some footwork made up. Mm-hmm. So, so you start the band. What happens next? Where do you like? Are there obviously we know about like the Grad Club and Clark Hall Pub we mentioned, uh, but were you guys playing like house shows when you started? What what happened in the beginning? We played a couple. Yeah, um, our first show ever was at at Clark Hall. So it was like a like tying it back to Queens. Like it was a Queens. Uh, event pretty much in a queen's pub that was our first show i think it was a battle of the bands or it was an indie night or something like that i can't i can't quite remember it was like two and a half years ago but um yeah like so it was like kind of the queen's community that really uh, gave us the first opportunity i suppose well, it's such a neat community, too. And like I said, none of us have gone to Queens, but I mean, we've seen so many mm-hmm. bands <laughs> yeah. come out of Queens University. Definitely. Yeah. And they're never people studying music, <laughs> yeah. as far as I know. Like, what, Mostly what you guys... engineers. Mostly engineers is what I've seen. That does happen. I myself yes. uh, and I'm in English, and Evan here is in music. So I said music. Oh, you are in music. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. 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 Burning bridges already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's what I do. <laughs> There's a quote on your website where uh, you guys said that it takes a second for them to respect a student band when you're trying to branch out from the kind of student world of music mm-hmm. into the broader right. world of uh, the music scene in Kingston. Can you kind of elaborate on that and expand on your experiences going from being a, a student band to being a, I guess you could just say a Kingston band at this point or just a band in general? Yeah, it. It is kind of hard because Queens is definitely like its own kind of bubble within the Kingston community, and I think a lot of people kind of see that already. So to kind of like we already know we have so many fans within that bubble, you know. But then to go play a show at the Toucan where it's like half locals and half like our friends, you never know how that's gonna first like come off. But uh, I don't know. They yeah, like given such a great music scene here in Kingston, it, we were warmly welcomed, which yeah. was like it Down, was like, very much appreciated. Back like, when like the Brooklyn was, was open, the mansion and stuff. Yeah. It's like playing at like those kinds of places. Like it, it starts to get you like the local uh, attention, like the local clout, I guess, like to be recognized as, as more. Yeah, I guess right. Big time. Yeah. I saw you guys uh, open for Oak Ridge Ave uh, several weeks back at the mm-hmm. Grad Club. The, Great yeah. show, lots Thank of energy. You. That was Thank a lot you. of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what other Kingston venues have you sort of branched out into as we talk about this getting out of the Queens bubble? Uh, like, well, like I was saying, like um, the Brooklyn. Like, I mean, when we first were starting, like when it was open, it was always very good to us, and um, the Mansion's always been really good to us as well. Um, the Toucan as well. Yeah, that's the where, Toucan. Uh, yeah, like um, where Oak Ridge plays a lot. So, um, and we're looking to play with them. I think they're. Yeah, on the eighth. On the eighth, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll be a good time. Yeah. Um, and the merchant recently as well, which was a lot of fun. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a great merchant. Venue. Yeah. Yeah. They've yeah. all yeah, like pretty much those bars are like pretty much where we've been for <laughs> like the the most of it. We've been um trying to go to like places like Blue Martini and uh, as well like that and I think we're looking to get in there pretty soon. You're kinda of doing yeah. the circuit. Yeah, Just the circuit. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Making the rounds. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So are you guys are still students, am I correct? Um, I am. He just graduated. I graduated in uh, December. So as people who are still like, uh, let me phrase it this way: you guys, as students, you guys have a really great sound in the sense that it's really well recorded. And looking at the studio that you've recorded in, I don't even know if I'm, uh, correct me if I'm pronouncing this right. Jusaka Studios, is that right? Jukasa. 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 Ah, Jukasa. Ah, I was close. <laughs> Got my letters screwed up. But that's a, a high quality studio with some really, really big names that have recorded there: yeah. Alexis on Fire, uh, July Talk, Three Days Grace, Snoop Dogg. What <laughs> led you to that studio? And is that hard? To, to and how did you for, afford it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Um, Just trying to dance around that party. <laughs> That's all good. Well, it, Plug for OSAC. <laughs> it was a, it was a lot. It was a long string of shows trying to save up enough money for yeah. like even like part of it. We took uh, crowdfunding. Yeah, crowdfunding. That we took was a that was a big from, part of it. Uh, our uh, frontman Sam's parents, who, which we paid back, but they were super generous and yeah. just giving it to us in the first place. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it took yeah. it took a while. Really, it's yeah. like the is the is the gist of it. Um, it was a great time though. Great studio, yeah. the highest quality. Great people. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, in every every capacity. It was definitely worth it for that point in our like because before that we had only kind of recorded at like an am- amateurish level. So I think like yeah. hearing what our music is like supposed to sound like through like a professional lens really kind of yeah. made it possible for us to you know get more. Get more juices flowing in the local community, and and yeah, what led you to that studio, in, like in particular? Well, it was actually uh, Misco right over there, who um, was just uh, 
I don't. He he really really wanted to go to that studio. He he knew the reputation of it. I guess it's um it's kind of just outside of Hamilton, sort of like uh, on uh, the the native res, like out there out there. And uh, and I I don't know what 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 led you to that. What do you remember? Well, I visited there when. Right, 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 right. Yes, his so dad, he, his dad, I remember that. His dad uh, took him there just briefly to that studio. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much <laughs> it. But, like, and, and since, I don't know, like, because none of those, like, big names had probably been there yet, I guess, at that point. I don't know how young you were, but I don't know, just on, like, the reputation alone, like, I was like, oh, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard, hard to pass out. Yeah, hard, to, hard to, <laughs> to argue with them. Yeah. Well, it's always a great experience going into a studio, too, because you hear your music differently it's it's very absolutely. much a mirror exactly. yeah. for absolutely. a musician yeah. absolutely yeah yeah you kind of hear exactly like just like flawless like the flawless potential i mean it's like it's obviously hard to recreate that in like a live manner like you can't really get like all the the subtle <laughs> subtle <laughs> things worked out but yeah just hearing it like that it is really eye-opening for mm-hmm. eye-opening experience and hearing it change and like make it what you want it to sound like you yeah know what I yeah mean? having your own like input like firsthand be yeah. like i want to change this up i want to do something yeah. something different here you and hear it in different ways and just like yeah it changes your perception on like recorded music in, yeah. in general and we were lucky we had a really two really great sound engineers yeah. there who were Definitely. super super experienced super talented very so. talented yeah you mentioned uh, crowdfunding as part of the campaign that led you there, and I find crowdfunding such a fascinating, growing part of the music industry right now, <laughs> yeah. because there's this symbiotic relationship between bands and their fans, and it wasn't until like recently that you could really make that work in such a, a fantastic way to allow you to be able to record and produce uh, a physical you know, record or something for them to, to pick up. Right. How was the experience for you doing crowdfunding as musicians leading to recording an EP? Well, it's pretty like uh, humbling, honestly, like to to know that there's that many people who will like just like chip in a little bit. And a lot of it was like family, friends, like, but like a lot of it wasn't just like people who heard our music and would just like chip in a little bit. It's like uh, really, really nice, honestly. It's a really nice feeling. But yeah, good experience, I thought. Like, yeah, I mean, all, all in all, like it was, yeah. it was very generous of, of everybody who uh, who supported that. Definitely. You guys are going to be on the road soon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just like a little stint of shows. Um, we're in Toronto on March 5th at the Cameron House, Ottawa March 7th at uh, Live on Elgin, <laughs> and then uh, Oshawa on March 13th at the Atria. Right on. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's been a while since we've been uh, on the road, so it's going to be a good time. <laughs> and there's a video in the works as well. That's correct. There is. Um yeah, that's scheduled to be out uh, on the 22nd. Yeah. It's all shot and filmed in Kingston, so Kingston's strong. <laughs> yeah. there. Well, we were talking about that last month. I love that, and this is sort of a new thing in the last five to ten years, is there are Kingston music videos now, Yeah, yeah. which is yeah. really cool. Are we yeah. going to see some familiar Kingston sites, or is it going to be more of an it's indoor kind of like, thing? It's kind of like the... I don't know. Yeah, it's, you, there's like not might. a lot of iconic, <laughs> iconic Kingstonography. Okay, well, <laughs> depends what part of Kingston you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's shot at a motel. So. Yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, there's some shots with the yeah. you know, like got the windmills in there and like I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. We actually saw it for yeah, the first time yesterday. You got the lake yesterday. for sure. Yeah, got the lake <laughs> we got sure. you. The, yeah, a lot of the lakes in it. Um, but yeah, it's looking, it's looking, it's looking really nice. I'm yeah. really excited for yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. When's that going to be available? Uh, the 22nd. So I'm excited to. Excited for it to be out there. I always like to ask about uh, any any horrible experiences on stage, <laughs> any mishaps, any stories. We've had a couple of those. Couple Everybody of has, yes. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you got for us? <laughs> you want to? <laughs> I know it's a good story when it starts. It's not about either of us, either, which is it's like not about either of us. Um, but, uh, there's one that comes to mind yeah, immediately. Yeah, it's just one. Um, yeah. Sorry, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he should have been here. Yeah. Well, so it was. It was a while ago. He's. He was very upset when it happened. But uh, so pretty much, it was. Um, Homecoming? I think so. Homecoming, yeah. And we were going to play like a, a really big show. It was the biggest biggest show we'd played for a while and it was an outdoor outdoor place. It was like the Reunion the Reunion Street Festival. Yeah, Reunion Street Festival. Yeah. Are you yeah. guys sharing a water bottle? Well, yeah. Didn't we, we not give you your own? Like, like oh, we got each? one, and you know, we're oh, it's easy going. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. But um, yeah. So uh, 
I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't with Sam. I, I think I slept in. I slept in pretty late. I wasn't. Uh, wasn't enjoying the uh, the festivities. And uh, but at about four o'clock, we were supposed to go on at what time? Like like uh, eight or something. We were opening. We were opening uh, for for um, who are we opening for? <laughs> Sam Roberts, thank yeah. you. Jeez, I couldn't find, remember that name. Sorry, can I say that? We're yeah, yeah, you can second. swear here. It's okay. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. Uh, Sweet. I should have I said was... before, the philosophy here on swearing, it's immature to not be able to express yourself without swearing. It's also immature to pretend you've never heard a swear word before. Also so that. with that in mind, please proceed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can't even think without swearing. <laughs> <laughs> but true. um yeah so so he was uh, it was like I, it was getting late in the day i got a call from uh from ben I, our, our buddy ben who, yeah, nobody uh, had really seen him no one had seen <laughs> we him were, for a while it was he getting was, to the point where like sound check was gonna happen pretty soon yeah, he was we with all... like our, our like our group of friends and like uh, so he got way way too fucked up <laughs> and uh <laughs> Yeah, and so we, uh, I went and saw him. He was like trying to sleep it off, passed out in his bed. We put him to bed for like about an hour and a half. <laughs> got him back up. He was like uh, immediately ran to Starbucks, got him the yeah, largest coffee, like, <laughs> like three espresso shots in it, fed him yeah. bread, you know, fed the, him the usual. Got him he was like at first wanted, he couldn't yeah. focus his eyes anywhere, but then we finally got him to you know follow the finger that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> and uh, I mean, <laughs> we got him. We there. made it work. Yeah. I remember it our trumpet sound. player. <laughs> our trumpet player to summarize. <laughs> Matt Matt Vico, our trumpet player at the time, uh, prayed in the porta potty out back. <laughs> <laughs> he prayed to God, and he yeah, hasn't been was a... he hasn't been Christian for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, needless to say, it was a very stressful situation. Yeah, it certainly was. It was and, uh, and to add, like, add uh, insult to injury, there was strings breaking. Yeah, and Kelby, it was, it was like, like Kelby's like bass string broke. Yeah, so, so there was strings breaking. Oh, it was <laughs> calamity. It was uh, yeah. interesting, but. but we got through it. Yeah, enough yeah. times passed now that it's yeah, just kind it, it of makes, hilarious, It honestly, makes you so. stronger in the long As long as yeah. you like, get over it and like that's the worst that can happen, then it like makes you like... I'm just glad Sammy had a good day, you know? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Honestly, he had a, time he, he, life, he, so had a he had a good that's time. Fine. Yeah. Somebody had a good day. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm curious, like, what happens, you know, we've already talked about people graduating. What happens to this band in the future once everyone's done school? Does the band continue or is this just uh, for a good time, not a long time, or is this going to keep going? <laughs> I want to like, I want to keep it going personally. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I've just been working down at Che Piggy and just playing in the band lately. So it's been a good time. Kinda yeah. Maybe considering a master's in, in like a year or two, but for now it's just... We're, I think we're looking to, to probably move to another Southern Ontario city, up, like probably a bigger one, either Toronto or Ottawa. Um, looking forward, like uh, to like the next half of the year or the latter half of the year, rather. But um, yeah, I, I think we definitely our our attitude is uh, to to make uh, revenue from the band and uh, to live off of it eventually, if yeah. we can, in the next upcoming years. And yeah. That's pretty much our attitude. Fingers and, crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. That's Famous last words, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Cool. Well, yeah. good luck. Hey, thank you. And we have a new single to play. Yeah. Yeah. Neon Vacancy. Yeah. Anything you guys would like to say about the song before we get into it? Uh, Is this the premiere kind of, like of the a... song? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. this will be yeah, the, is, probably yeah. the first time. Well, yeah. I guess this isn't live right now, but yeah, it will <laughs> this will be released very soon. It'll be released yeah, at yeah. midnight tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll, I, I think the music will speak for itself. I hope. Like, <laughs> I hope it'll it'll translate its yeah. its message. Yeah. It's kind of like I'm a, excited for it. Like a for rock ballady vibe, but it's yeah. got some got some heart in it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I heard it. It's good, and it has all that. Yes. Thank you. Well, guys, thanks for coming in. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank cheers. you, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. So this is Neon Vacancy by Kiss the Fish on Kingston Live. I never 
March 12th at the Ale House as part of Kingston Canadian Film Festival. Kingston welcomes, kind of welcoming home in a way, Bedouin Sound Clash. Joining me on the phone right now, Jay Malinowski of Bedouin Sound Clash. How are you doing, Jay? I'm great, man. How are you? Excellent. I'm doing super, super well. So it's been a little while since we've uh, had you here in Kingston. Do you remember the last time you played? Like, how long has it been? I think it was at the Ale House. I, I always think of it as AJ's Hangar. But, um... I think that was probably in 2010 when we were on Light the Horizon. I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure you think of it as AJ's, having that been the identity <laughs> when you were a Queen student here. Do you remember any particular shows you attended as a student that really stood out to you at the venue at that time? Yeah, for sure. We Well, I mean, it was the shows that we opened. I mean, when we were at school, I think the first big show that we got to play was um, with David Usher. He was, oh, he was playing there, and uh, I think last minute we were asked, to open and then the, I think but so that was like the first kind of bigger band we played with and then um, but the most memorable was was opening for Big Sugar a few times while they were there and we became friends with Gordy uh, through those shows and we've remained friends ever since that's outstanding, especially thinking of uh, you with David Usher at the Ale House. That's or at AJ's, I should say. That's a very distinctly Kingston show. <laughs> you know what we loved is that we'd always get asked by uh, by people if like the opener fell through, like uh, the promoter would call us because they'd be like, "Hey, Bedouin's probably around." <laughs> so I think we opened for Arrested Development. Um, at stages as well. That was the most random show we did. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. I would love to see that. That's a hell of a yeah. double bill. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about what you've been up to. You put out the uh, the new album uh, just last year. There was a nine-year gap between full-length releases from Bedouin Sound Clash. Uh, what was, uh, was that by design, or what was the, the story there? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing it for a while. We, I mean, it was all we did for 10 years. And I think after that, we kind of just needed to take a break. And I started doing a solo project. I wrote a book. I went on a book tour with that. 
so we just kind of like we left it. We didn't ever say we were breaking up or anything. We just took some space, and then uh, nine years later, I kind of um, I wrote something that kind of they found it sort of better, and I sent it over to Eon, and uh, we started making a record. And during that time off, as you mentioned, you did do uh, your solo record. You also recorded that uh, Armistice EP. What's it like writing a new record for Bedouin versus writing something for one of those two projects? Hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. They're, they're all really different. Like, whenever I do a collaboration, it's, always, it's, it's one of the most rewarding experiences. It can also be super challenging because you have to make compromises. And that's, I think, a really important part of a creative process anyways, and, and you learn a lot. But each one's different, like whether it was Armistice, working with Beatrice, or then doing uh, the Dead Coast project where I was working with classical musicians. It's really, it's it's kind of, I always feel like I'm, I like to push myself outside of whatever safety zone I have. But when I do Bedouin, it's because of me and Ian have been like best friends since we're 18. We kind of don't even have to just to talk. We, we speak the same language and it's just, it's, it's really um, just natural. So I feel like with Bedouin, it's a lot more, it feels like home. And the other ones are just really good in terms of learning. Well, you also mentioned the book that you did in that time off in between. Uh, it's hard to call it time off because you were still busy with so many projects, but you also uh, did create that book, Skull and Bones, Skulls and Bones, I should say, uh, which is an illustrated novella. You're also into uh, visual arts. You're a very creative uh, person in every medium. What was that like, taking that new that new medium to that level? Um, it was like an idea I, I, I had in my head. You know, I, I was the, the Dead Coast Project, started with this inspiration from my from my grandfather who grew up in Cape Breton and had all these stories of the sailors and where we came from and, and our history going back to, to Ireland and France. So I had this idea to, to start trying to, like, okay, I can't just express this just through music. And so it's like, okay, maybe I'll write a few short stories. And then um, Harper Collins got involved, and I realized, okay, I'll do a book, which I had no idea how to do. Um <laughs> And it, it was a lot. It's a lot more consuming than a three and a half minute song because the arc <laughs> of your idea has to last over a, a couple hundred pages. Um, it was. I mean, it was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I think I make things really difficult for myself. Um, but it was. I'm it's glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say you didn't know what you were doing when you started off, but I think that's how all great <laughs> art starts, right? Like if you if you had an instruction manual on exactly how to do it when you're getting started, then it wouldn't be art; it would just be paint by numbers, right? Yeah. Well, and I think yeah, there's a. I've, I've thought a lot about you know, you kind of have to have a bit of. Um, I guess there's a bit of bravery, but also just not even thinking about what you're doing and just going for it. I mean, even from the start, like if you told someone, hey, we're going to start a, uh, you know, we like the Clash or like the Specials, we're going to start a kind of like reggae-influenced band in Canada, out of Kingston, Ontario, everyone would been like, that's kind of of a crazy idea. Um, But we just listened to ourselves, so we just kept going. Um, Yeah, sometimes I don't think about what I'm actually doing, I think that's part of it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what was it like starting, like you said, that reggae influence band in Kingston? Because when people think of rock or any kind of music coming out of Kingston, I think there's a, a Kingston sound people expect something like the hip or the glorious sons or something kind of yeah. in that that rock sphere. But you very distinctly are a little bit outside of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were kind of we're transplants in Kingston. I mean, definitely, we didn't realize how strange it would be to other people because that was just the music that we grew up listening to. So for me, it was more on the punk side of things, and Eon was more just on the straight reggae dance hall side. And we came together, and we just like, hey, let's make something that's different out of the things we love. But yeah, definitely, we heard the, I mean, how many times we've, we've read the, the opening line from a, any article on us, like, they're from Kingston, not Kingston, Jamaica. Um, <laughs> so it never, <laughs> it never gets old. But yeah, and I mean, we didn't even realize that. I remember I was talking to someone, and they're like, man, you guys came out of nowhere. Like, no one, at the time, it was, like, all indie, and then all of a sudden, there's this, like, kind of Paul Simon-y thing. So we didn't realize how different we were at the time. Well, Jay, thank you so much for joining us. You can check out Bedouin Sound Clash as part of Kingston Canadian Film Festival going down downtown Kingston, March 11th to 15th. It's going to be a great time. I hope I see you there. This has been Kingston Live. We encourage you to rate us on your listening platform of choice and subscribe where possible. Kingston Live was recorded in Kingston at Titan Sound. 
Hosted by Riley Jabor and John and Peter Sanfilippo. Executive producer, Rob Howard. Special thanks to Jackson Coulter and Reed Cunningham. Opinions expressed by Kingston Live guests are their own and don't necessarily reflect the opinions of Kingston Live hosts and staff. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at podcast at kingstonlive.ca.